In this week's weekly video fishing forecast, I have the details on the upcoming Fred Gallifire Memorial South Shore Fishing Classic. We have a preview of the November glossy issue and our correspondents check in from around the island, all here at thefisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today is October 27th and the November glossy issue of the Fisherman Magazine is out now. In the current issue, our staff has a rundown of the best bets for stripers along the striper coast. If you're looking for that trophy tog, don't miss out this article by Captain Connor McElode. And while we're on the subject of blackfish, check out my Q&A on these challenging fish. All this and more in the November issue of the Fisherman Magazine. Remember, $29.95 gets you 12 glossy print issues and all the weekly digital content, plus full access to the website too. And best of all, you can compete in our Dreamboat and Coastal Kayak Clash contest. Don't forget that this video is available as a podcast on iTunes and Google Podcasts. Search for the Fisherman Magazine podcast and subscribe so you can listen to this broadcast. This Friday is the start of the Fred Gallifar Memorial South Shore Fishing Classic and here are the details. Fishing begins at noon this Friday and runs to noon on Sunday. The deadline to register at Captree Bait and Tackle is 9 a.m. on Saturday. First place prizes are cash checks from the state along with a van stall reel. Other prizes include rods from St. Croix, Visser pliers, tackle bags from Sims, and tackle bundles. Tuesday, November 8th is a big day, but not only for our country, but it's the Riverview Stripe Bass Tournament benefiting the Send the Kid Fishing Fund and challenging anglers. The registration is the 7th at the View Restaurant in Oakdale at 6 p.m. Click on the card in the top right for all the details. Now let's go around the map and I'll tell you what I've been hearing. To the west, the overall numbers of bass are outstanding in the ocean from Jones to Rockaway. And in the past week, have both charter and party boats are experiencing limited catches of slot fish. On the tog front, they're also providing good action in the bays and around the bridges. Ocean 2 on the reefs. The number of tog has been very good with a fine, a fine number of keepers and loads of shorts for the action. Reports indicated that green crabs on standard rigs or blackfish jigs work equally as well. Along the South Shore, anglers had a lot of bass this week with fish taking live baits inside the Great South Bay. Field editor Tom Melton got out and fished with his son-in-law Issa and buddy Charlie Murphy for a great day of fishing. They started off at first light at the Moses Bridge and had non-stop action with the blackfish. Watch the so shorts and just some keepers. They also drifted eels along the South Beach and Ranger Station for three solid stripers of 35, 35, and 38 inches released, of course. In Mauritius Inlet, bass are taking live spot, live eels, bunker, and artificial baits. Blackfish action is also good on the rocks of the West Jetty and the tip of the West Jetty. If you can get out to the Mauritius of Fire Island Reef, sea bass, porgies, and blackfish are being taken there too. On the east end, consistent tug fishing continues around Montauk Point, Fishers Island, Block Island. Most of the boats headed out are seeing great action with limits of tug up to 8 pounds. Lenny Baldassi reported them from that size from about 50 feet of water. A few bigger ones are coming up too, and the main bait of choice is still green crabs. Striper fishing was a little tough on the east end, but some were being caught in the local rips on bucktails and trolling methods. More good news from the east was the large sea bass that came back into the area. Some larger fish are being caught around Block Island on jigs. Giant tuna have also been caught south of the point at about 120 feet of water. Live mackerel and bunker is your best bet. Along the north shore, blackfish dominate the waters with sea bass and porgies making a good showing too. I heard some good catches in the deeper waters off the north fork of the island for sea bass actually. Togs still remain relatively shallow and responding well to jigs and rigs baited with green crabs. For anglers still chasing bass and blues, your best bet is to stay in the harbors as there is an incredible amount of bait fish taking hold in all the sheltered waters. Some bluefish up to 18 pounds have been reported. Top water poppers are a good bet for them. In addition, the squid have moved in everywhere from Little Neck Bay to Orient Harbor where squid jigs under the lights in the dark are the best bet. A few reports of Albies are still filtering in too. 
And for the surf action, it's hot along the South Shore right now. Bunker fuel, the fishing to the east with fish up to 30 pounds on Southampton beaches. And in the west, I heard of some sandals settling in with fish from schoolies up to 20 pounds being caught in the early mornings. I got out during the week and had a good session with the stripers in Shinnecock area catching fish on darters and SP minnows. The north shore of the island is seeing a good bite of bluefish inside the western harbors on the north fork. The excellent togging from the shore continues with some stripers and albies popping up now and then around the points. News 12 meteorologist has been on the big fish all week. Let's see how the weekend conditions are looking. Rich. Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's check that weekend forecast and see what we got going on. You can always check favorite apps, websites, weather tools, whatever you got. This is a general heads up, general overview on the upcoming weekend across Long Island. So last weekend of October and uh, water temps kind of holding in the 60s and wave heights still going to be up there. We have that east-northeasterly persistent fetch with an offshore system. So we're still going to have a lot of four to eights around the ocean past about four to five miles tight to the beach for the surf casters and any boats working right along the beaches should be okay. Just watch out some of the swells coming in at low tide. We'll start to get two to fours, four to eights, moving a little bit offshore for Sunday, maybe the safer day of the weekend. So we'll see how things shake out there. Still got a northeast about 10 to 20 on Saturday. So still gusty, still a bit choppy and rolly. Starts to get down a little bit towards the 5 to 15 from the north, northeast on Sunday. So I've had to pick for the ocean Probably a little better on Sunday. We'll keep our fingers crossed. We can get at least half the weekend with uh, kind of a safe ocean. Uh, high tides north shore for the early afternoon, south shore for about mid to late morning. 50s to near 60, a little cool on Saturday, some 60s on Sunday. Let's check out the Guru, a little different look here. And there's your Saturday. And yeah, you know, kind of confirming that northeast about 10 to 20 early. Maybe settling down a little bit in the afternoon. These wave heights are in meters, so we're talking three to five feet. Probably a small craft advisory still up on the ocean. Sunday, a little better, less breeze, certainly. Maybe these waves come down more to three to four feet with a bit of a roll. But uh, if I had to choose, I'd say maybe Sunday, the safer half of the weekend. A lot of fish out there, of course. If you do go out, be safe as always. Catch them up. Have a great weekend. Matt, back to you. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt, everyone. Uh, we're into the fall run, but at times it doesn't seem like it. There's been sporadically good fishing for bass off the beach. I got into a few uh, over the weekend at night. Uh, I got my first one and a daughter, which is pretty cool to keep throwing it for a long time and finally connect with some fish on on one of those. So that was cool. At sunset, uh, you know, bucktail bite's been all right around the inlets off the beach. The open beach, though, really haven't had much luck. There's been weeds, there's been wind issues. Um, you know, it's not really as, as good as most people thought it would be for, you know, for this new moon that we just had. So I know there's, you know, pretty good fishing to the west of us and sand eels around Robert Moses and Jones Beach. Um, so, you know, it's that typical kind of full run. They're here, they're there, you know, chasing them, you know, trust the patterns, you know, give other new spots a try, put your time in and they're gonna pop up, you'll end up the right place at the right time. Um, with the swell, with the wind, with this crazy fog for the last couple of days, uh, not too many people have gotten out on the boat, so I don't really have any reports um, there. I don't think that there's been much bunker around though. It does seem like uh, whatever happened after Columbus Day, they just kind of like disappeared. So hopefully we're getting a different wind tomorrow. We're through the new moon, coming up on the full moon. Anything could happen. So uh, keep grinding away at it. Blackfish still going pretty good in the inlets, both by shore and by boat, you know, either spot lock or safely anchor near the mouth of the inlet. Not too many people have gotten, you know, out front really. Uh, good tuna bite last weekend. A couple of people got uh, some pretty epic stuff. Had to go all the way out to Hudson. A few people were able to cut the trip a little bit short on distance when they ran into some draggers. Pretty good yellowfin bite, uh, and there were also some bluefin and uh, a couple of big eye as well. So uh, don't give up hope. There's still a lot of fall run left, and uh, I'll definitely be grinding away at it. So hopefully I'll see you out there. Let us know how you do. I'll talk to you next week. Back to you, Matt. Let's take a quick break and get the latest from the Dreamboat and Coastal Kayak Clash Conference. What a week for past Dreamboat winner Sam Dibner of Woodbury, Connecticut. Sam entered a 16.75 pound bluefish, adding 10 points to his total, earning him the first place bluefish position. He racked up another 9 points for a 12.9 pound blackfish. Keep in mind that past Dreamboat Grand Prize winners are not eligible to win the Grand Prize again. If Sam remains in first place at the end of the competition, the second place contestant would be the Grand Prize winner, and in that case, Sam would assume second place. 
The standings are now Sam Dibner with 34 points, Rob Carrizano with 21, Dean Paella with 15, and Garrett Weir with 14. The Dreamboat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a new Steiger Craft 23 Miami powered by a Yamaha along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. Hey everybody, just going to give you a quick rundown on what's going on in the Coastal Kayak Clash this week. We only had one fish entered. That was a 26 and a quarter inch blackfish entered by Eric Lopez, which is good enough for third place in the category. The top three in the tournament have not changed. We got Tom Hode holding down third place with six points, Bob Wagner holding down second place with seven points, and Justin Oser still leading the world with 11 points. From Northport, we have Mark from Cow Harbor Bait and Tackle. Hey, it's great to be back with everybody this week. Let me tell you something. The North Shore has been so consistent. I haven't seen it like this in quite a long time. We've got bluefish, still got bass, there's porgies, uh, sea bass on the outside. Um, there's plenty of blackfish to be caught, whether you're fishing on our side or Connecticut, with Connecticut being stronger. So you want to make sure that you've got all your regulations in place for that. Um, Asian crabs, green crabs, they're both working well. Um, personally, I prefer uh, green crabs because they're so easy for me. But uh, Asians, if you're into the Asians, that's fantastic. Listen, the harbor, there's nothing but great things to say. It's not blitz conditions like it was last week, but we're going to be coming on another moon again. You're going to be looking to target lower tides if it's possible to work that into your schedule. We're going to be coming into daylight savings time. So if you're looking at the way that uh, everything is considerably changing each day, the, the um, sun is going down a little bit earlier. We're seeing foggier mornings, and these are great ways to get out and do fishing. If you're on the boat, be careful of the fog. You should know that these thermal changes are really going to create some foggy mornings. Um, we're coming into the fall, we're seeing less and less daylight hours. It's triggering the fish. The fish know they're putting on the bite. Get out there, enjoy your fishing, and uh, just be safe and have a great time. Until next week, as always, I bid you all peace, tight lines. From the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey Matt, Fire Island Report this week, fishing is excellent. Striped bass and blackfish uh, inshore, uh, that's the ticket right now. Uh, either tide, it's working, uh, and a lot of fish, slot size and larger. Uh, in fact, I haven't had a fish that was a short yet this season. So, uh, nice fish, quality fish. Uh, some of the, the head boat guys, uh, Joey on the jib said it's probably the best blackfish season he's seen in 20 years. So. Uh, fishing is excellent, weather looks decent for this weekend, and if the ocean is doable and you can get offshore, some of the big boats, a canyon run, it's red hot with big eye tuna right now and yellowfin. So that's about the word for this week, Matt. Uh, fishing's good. Uh, we got a tournament coming up, the Riverview, on uh, election day. Keep that in mind, and if you want the full report, log on to skimmeroutdoors.com. That's it, Matt. Talk to you next week. With our fly and freshwater report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. I got a question for you, Matt. What job can you have and be wrong almost three, three quarters of the time and still have a job the next day? <laughs> of course, that's the weatherman. Monday, I got up in the morning and they predicted rain on Monday, rain on Tuesday, and I was running a trip to the Housatonic up to uh, up to the Housatonic on Tuesday, and they predicting rain all day. The river was starting to come up, so I had to make a decision and I canceled. As you can see, this is Tuesday. <laughs> Look at it; it's beautiful out. It would have been a great day, but hey, listen, I had to make a choice and I did. Sorry, <laughs> but anyway, most of the rivers upstate did get a little rain, but they didn't come up that much. And so everything is fishing really well. This is a great time to get out there. A day like this, you know, uh, I would probably fish streamers, maybe some blue wing olives if it's overcast, but who knows. As far as uh, saltwater going, I've been out quite a bit. I go out almost uh, every other day. Uh, shad, I've been high catching shad and that's fine. I break out my low weight weight and a small fly and I'm having a ball. Uh, I did run a trip last week, and of course we did catch stripers, um, but they're, they're around and they're getting more and more, and I'm hearing more and more reports on the surf. Uh, a good friend of mine, Tom, the electrician, he actually uh, came in and he gets up, 
he gets up at like three in the morning, you know, and uh, he's out the door and he's been fishing the open beaches using plugs, catching some really quality bass. Uh, so there are around, it's, every tide is different. Now, as far as you really want to thrill, to start doing steelhead. Steelhead is coming into all the rivers, uh, both on Lake Ontario and also on Lake Erie. And a group of that comes into my shop. They're, they've been going out to Lake Erie this week and they've been sending me photographs of steelhead that they're picking up, basically on streamers and egg patterns. So it is really, this is a time of year I love. Look at this, I'm in short sleeves. Here it is the end of October. I mean, nothing really, it's beautiful out. Hopefully this will keep going, keep their season going long. Well, we can always hope for the best, but don't listen to those weathermen. Until next week, tie lines, everybody. Let's check in with Chris Ludwig. Chris. Hey, thanks, Matt. What's going on, guys? So I'm going to be covering the last two weeks here, starting out with the surf side of things. My local waters, not very far from home, have been wonderful to me this year. Slot plus size fish in the surf close to the beach in a predictable manner on a consistent basis. That's what everybody wants. Uh, we were getting these fish in the range of, you know, those are the smaller fish, like the 25, 28 inches, but they were all consistently that 32, 35 and up. Beautiful. Throwing things like this guy here, the 11 inch Bomba Shad on a one and a half ounce first light tackle jig head. It's basically just a big body to go with that profile of the bunker that they're after at the moment. Moving forward, my buddy Larry invited me out in this boat the other day and we were fishing for these uh, same striped bass, pretty much same area but a different side of the bite. So instead of me attacking them from the surf, we're on the other side of the pods in the water on the boat now. Same style of fishing, doing the bomba shads, but mostly dropping live bunkers, snagging them next to the boat, rehooking them on circle hooks, putting them back down and catching these same slot plus fish. The action's been consistent and wonderful. I could not ask for more and I can't wait to get back out there. I hope to see you all out there as well. Back to you, Matt. From Sheepshead Bay, Chris Landry checks in. Chris. Thanks, Matt. What an incredible week of fishing it's been. Last week, I reported about the red hot yellowfin tuna bite, and I had to get on it myself. So I hopped on Jumpin' Mako Charters. We went 100 miles out with Captain Gary B. and his son Kyle, and we got on the yellowfin. We limited out. The bite is still hot. Get on it fast, because who knows how long it will last. Inside the bay, there's still tons of schoolies to be had. It's been super foggy. We went out Tuesday. We couldn't see 50 feet in front of the boat. We had to listen for the birds. We found them and we were rewarded with tons of schoolies. Uh, we were getting them on spooks, which is a lot of fun. Uh, the next day, Wednesday, same situation, super foggy. We went out with, uh, with Bass Appeal and Frank's Fish Club and we went out for the monsters that we've been hearing about in Raritan. We went out and we had to search for hours before getting on a bite. We couldn't find adult bunker anywhere. The other boats we spoke to couldn't find adult bunker anywhere. There was a lot of peanut bunker and we had to search and work for that bite, but we finally got on them. So sometimes it's not as easy as it looks on social media. Put in the work, get the reward. All right, so be safe out there. Tight lines, thank you and back to you, Matt. Let's check in with Max Finch from the Connecticut side of the Western Sound. Hey everyone, Max here from Fisherman's World with another local fishing report. The striped bass bite is wide open as these fish are really schooling up and starting to migrate. They're meeting all this peanut bunker, leaving our harbors, our estuaries, and our rivers on our open beaches. And we've seen some really incredible blitzes. We've seen a lot of fish in that slot fish class, and then we've seen a bunch over slot this past week leading up to the new moon. There's a lot of schoolie action in our estuaries and our back bays, so throwing stuff like small tins, small spooks, bucktails, and small paddle tails work good this time of year. They're starting to load up on our deeper water reefs, so diamond jigging places like 28C and 11B on the outgoing is gonna get really, really good. There's some monster bluefish around. We've seen fish over 15 pounds the past couple weeks, and they're running back and forth on our beaches, places like Half Pasture Beach, you know, Sherwood Island, and then outside in the backside of the islands and coming back up in our estuaries chasing all this peanut bunker. The blackfish bite remains steady. I would say the deeper water is definitely your best bet for a bunch of quality keepers. The shallow water bite, we've seen a lot, a lot of shorts, so you really gotta work through them to find the keeper fish. The porgies are still biting. I would say they're really moving on deeper water structure now. I mean, they are shallow. Guys are still getting them from some beaches, but you really gotta fish the beaches with the jetties and then, you know, the rock piles. Thanks and good luck. 
Lastly, we check in with Captain Ben Gilmore from Marina Pez Vela down in Costa Rica. Hey there guys, welcome to Costa Rica and the Marina Pez Vela. We got this week's fishing report. It's been a good old week down here. We had some nice variety going on. There's been a few sailfish, blue marlin, and yellowfin tuna further offshore. Some really nice tuna in the 50 to 60 pound range with a few bigger fish mixed in also. The mahi-mahi fishing has been good, really consistent at the moment. Most of the mahi have been between about eight and 15 miles out. It's a nice easy fishing. You can even do it in a half day at this time of year. Inshore has not been the best recently. We've had a lot of rain for, for the rainy season. So the, the water's been quite murky inshore, but the inshore boats are still catching a few rooster fish, a few snappers and jacks and a few other species as well. Always worth fishing down here in Costa Rica. It's really gonna get cranking November, December. Uh, our high season runs through to April. So hope to see you guys down here soon. This is Ben Gilmore handing it back over to you guys. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and their social media pages. Be safe out there this weekend and I will see you right here next week at thefisherman.com.